My name is Jennifer Rogers. I am in the Career Development Center here at the University of St. Thomas. My job title is Employer Relations Specialist. Uh, that means that one of my primary areas of responsibility is to connect employers with your students. And we're very fortunate that many, many employers are very excited to hire University of St. Thomas students for internships and for full-time jobs because I'm very busy, uh, and that's a good, good sign. Uh, I am just one of six uh, full-time and part-time professional career specialists in our office. Uh, we're all master's degree trained. Uh, that means we have some special powers <laughs> that, uh, again, I would say I have a really good overview of a lot of the colleges across the state of Minnesota, and this is probably one of the most experienced career staffs that you will find anywhere. So I can say from personal experience, your son or daughter are in very good hands in this office. So I just want to give you um, a general overview of what I'm going to cover in this session today. Uh, we're going to review, of course, common career-related questions. What walks in our door, especially in the first and second years of a college career? Um, the various points during the college years when students want to make use of our services. And of course, I'm going to let you know what our services and resources are. Our services are free. Uh, except we have uh, well, two exceptions to that rule. The uh, Minnesota Private Colleges Job Fair does have a registration fee attached to it. Uh, most of the time it's juniors and seniors that uh, show up at that fair. And our career assessments do have a very small nominal fee attached to them. And that's just uh, we get a charge for the reports there too. The other thing for you to know is that students are not required to walk in our door. Nobody forces them to do this. That's why we're talking to you here. That's why we have, what is it, a list of 22 to 25 different methods we use to market the Career Development Center, our programs and services to students across campus uh, to let them know they're free to walk in our door. Our location, our offices are shifting, uh, but we will be at the start of the school year at the south end of Murray Hara Campus Center. So we'll be on the first floor right off the quad closest to the library. Very easy for your uh, student to walk right off the quad and find us. So our mission really is to guide students in the career decision-making process, um, to help educate them about job search skills, which are of course also internship search skills as well. And notice I use the word process, the career development process, that nobody just walks in the door, has one career meeting, and oops, we're done. <laughs> we figured out our career or our life or whatever. And, and we acknowledge that. And we acknowledge that each student comes to us in different phases and points along the continuum, and we're here to help them. I like to say, I'd like to see your student in my office every year, maybe every semester. And if they don't know what questions to ask, they just have to tell me where they are in their college career, and I'll bet you I can give them some, some tips about how they can strategically position themselves along the way. That means they can come into the first and second year, uh, and every year on, and. Uh, so that by the time they graduate and walk out the door, they're in pretty good shape. So one of the first questions is, what should I major in? Some students do walk in the door knowing or thinking they know what they want to major in, but for most students, that's still an up-in-the-air question, and it might change across time. Uh, so we think that that process involves exploring their interests, academic subjects that tap into their natural aptitudes. So we're going to start off this whole presentation by looking at a couple of examples of some common questions and thoughts around this topic. Wow, I'm at St. Thomas. This is exciting, but kind of scary. What's next? Everybody keeps asking me my major, and I have no idea. What should I do? Business, liberal arts. I like my class in English, but in high school I really liked biology. Maybe I should be a doctor. Chemistry was cool too. What about a pharmacist? Do I really have to decide now? I heard there are a lot of jobs for engineering majors and they get paid a lot of money. Maybe I should do that. I really hate math though. How do I decide? I finally made it to college. I worked so hard in high school to get here. I really am glad that my parents made me take all those AP courses so that I can take some extra classes, take fewer classes each semester, or graduate early. 
I have three semesters to declare a major. I love what my uncle does in international marketing. I could major in marketing, but the communications and journalism major here looks pretty cool too. I really like to read and write and always did well in English in high school. I know that my uncle majored in econ law. Ah, oh, this is frustrating. What's the right major for me? Any of that sound familiar? <laughs> A lot of students are going through that. So of course, one of the things our office does is help students explore their major options. Uh, and one of the sort of common sub-questions is, when do I have to choose my major? And there is a deadline. You know, Once students reach X number of credits, uh, the university is going to force them to make that decision. For most students, um, they have until the second semester of their sophomore year. But like everything, there are some exceptions to that rule as well. Uh, if your student is coming in with a lot of PSEO credits or other kinds of college credits, then they're going to be farther along in the process, right? So that means that their decision deadline is moved up, and they're going to have to make that decision faster than other students. So we see a lot of those students in our office um, and talk to them about uh, different things. We're going to go through some of that. Another exception to that rule is for most students, um, you can take a lot of general education courses in the first couple of years, uh, and, but there are some majors that might require that students start taking courses in the major even as early as the first or second year. And those would be things like maybe education majors, engineering majors, sciences, things like that. We are not the academic advising experts in our office, so detailed questions about how many course credits and, and when do I have to decide, that would be best referred to our academic counseling staff, just so you know that. So as they said, how do I decide? What is the right major for me? Well, here we have a lot of resources available. Um, one of the first common building blocks of career decision making are to go through some self-assessments. Maybe your student has already done an interest inventory, right? Maybe while they were in high school. Some high schools do that. Uh, we offer a variety of self-assessments and inventories, getting at skills, work values, those are career and work values, interests and personality. Uh, and as I said, there's a fee attached to those, but a student would meet with us and we would have a conversation to try to assess and decide which, if any of these instruments, would be helpful and appropriate to your student. In addition, we have a couple of very specific things here. Charting your career path is a new, a new thing that we tried last semester with one of our new staff. It's a multi-part seminar series that focuses on self-exploration for students that are searching for majors and careers. Uh, that will be offered this fall, so first and second year students can sign up for that and then see us once a week for several weeks and boy, they'll feel a lot better about everything by the end of about a month or so, I guarantee it. I Explore is the name of a, a program of activities that we recommend that first year students can engage in to start this career planning process. If any of you stopped by our information table just before this at the fair, you were probably handed information about the I Explore program and a way for your student to get information about that. Uh, if you missed that, our, our, our table at the fair, on our website, there's a student section and there's information about I Explore there, or anybody can just email our office and we can make sure that um, the student is on our mailing list and so they don't miss any of that up-to-date career information there. After uh, students think about who they are, uh, it's probably time to start brainstorming major options and then research those options. So here's just a couple of things we recommend. Certainly talking to faculty in that academic major or upperclassmen, juniors or seniors who are taking those classes now uh, and are very important and helpful things to do. Uh, reviewing the course catalog, that, I don't know, it sounds kind of obvious to me, but sometimes I talk to students who haven't really read through the classes that are required for that major. Or they might have glanced at the course titles, but they didn't actually read the descriptions of the classes. That can be very revealing. And of course, I would hope that if a student is trying to narrow their options, they like the majority of the courses that are involved in, in the majors that they're considering. That would be important. And that's what happens next. After all the brainstorming and all the options, they narrow and narrow and narrow it down. And we believe each person is unique 
in, in their reasons for coming to college, in their goals. So some people are just passionate. You know, I love this subject, I wanna do this. I've got a niece who loves to write and who's creative, and so her choice of major is gonna based, be based on her passionate interests. And then there are other students who are gonna say, no, you know, I want my major to lead me specifically to a job or a career, and I know where I'm headed. And that happens, right? Accountant for accounting and engineering for engineers. Uh, we offer one-on-one -on -one services to help your student go through this entire process and make sense of it all and sort it all out. It's probably our number one service um, that is used in our office. Students can just call and make an appointment. It's as easy as that. I'm just working for a living. I'm working for a living. I'm working for a living. So as I mentioned, for some people, um, the concept of jobs and careers is uppermost on their mind. They want to know what their options are, um, where their major choices are going to lead them down the road. Uh, and again, of course, we have lots of resources and suggestions for those students. Some people um, are really good and interested in reading information. So we do encourage people um, to gather that information. Uh, and we offer a number of resources. For example, our website has a lot of information about different careers, different jobs, occupational descriptions. Uh, we have what can I do with a major in both physical handouts we offer to students. We also have an online um, area of our website where students can do that. And we also have information like that in our post-graduation alumni survey. So we ask students the year after they graduate, so what job did you get with your major right after you graduated? And that also helps people understand what can I do if I major in philosophy or psychology or maybe some of those majors that don't directly easily connect with a specific job. So learning about job titles and industries is really a very part of the career development, career education process. I plan would be the next phase in the sophomore year. Again, another list of suggested career development activities uh, that your son or daughter could participate in. And again, within our website under students, there's a description of those activities. We also offer a lot of special events on campus to help educate students about different industries and jobs that are out there. And we do this through lots of ways. Um, we have career panels that come in, employers and alumni talking about what their job is. Pathways is the name of a specific um, event of, of career panels. It's open to all college students in the state of Minnesota, and we've been rotating different career subjects each year. So one year we'll talk about careers in communications, another year careers in the arts, another uh, year careers in the sciences and biosciences. That's what we've been doing. We're thinking about shaking that up, but that's an amazing event to get a lot of information, and we encourage students to do that. The Science Career Expo would be for students um, majoring in life sciences. We started that last year. We're gonna bring employers to campus to describe their industry, their type of work, and the internships and jobs that they offer. In addition to that, then those companies will have information tables uh, that your student uh, can avail themselves of and talk one-on-one -on -one with these employers, more specifically about those internship and job options and get advice about how they might work their way through. So that's specifically for sciences. And every semester, especially in the fall, we have employers come to campus and uh, talk again to students about their specific company, their specific internship and career paths. Our office uh, sponsors companies that employ students in all majors at the university. And uh, there are a number of student clubs and organizations where these companies will come and give presentations right in the student clubs. So I'll probably talk about that in just a second. Uh, the next um, piece talks about talking with professionals. Boy, we say this is, <laughs> I don't care when they come into our office, I think a lot of us would recommend they do this anytime. Talk with people to find out about their jobs and, and listen for those clues about whether this sounds like it would be interesting to me. Informational interviews would be, that's what we call that, information and advice interviewing. Job shadowing would be another direct experience way um, to talk to professionals and observe those jobs. And just general networking. We have a, a website that I'm going to talk about in a minute called Ask. Uh, so if anybody's familiar with LinkedIn, how many of you are doing LinkedIn? 
We always love to know that. So that's where really that's where a lot of job searching and networking is going. Uh, so we've created a group within LinkedIn to help connect students with our alumni professionals to facilitate that kind of networking. And those professionals are available for informational interviewing and job shadowing. So here we go. I'm kind of tired of talking, <laughs> so I'm going to need a drink of water, but we're going to ask you to do an activity at your tables, uh, and we will kind of move this. This activity is going to help bring to life answers to the question, what can I do with a major in? Uh, in the middle of your table are half purple sheets, so if you would each grab one of those purple sheets, you'll see on one side of it are four columns. Major A, Major B, Major C, Major D. So look at ma the Major A. What you see in that column is a list of job titles. We've gone through our post-graduation survey, and we know that, for example, in Major A, we have students doing those jobs, and they all had the same major. You move to, col to Major B, all of those people with those job titles had the same major, different major from A, and your job is to guess the four majors that attach to those columns of job titles, right? You get that? So you can work in individually, in pairs, or in tables to help each other. Guess what the common major was for each of the four columns you see. Any questions about that? It's a fun one, yes. And on the back is, yes, it's a short list. You go, oh, how do I know what the majors are? Good point. On the back of that sheet of paper is a list of the majors you have to choose from. That is not a complete list, of course, of every major at the University of St. Thomas, but just a short selection just for this exercise. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Yes. So I'll let you do that for a few minutes, and then we'll come back and we'll see what your answers are. gotten there yet, you'll know soon enough. <laughs> so now it's time for you to tell me what you guessed. Let's see here. So let's take major A. What, what do you think? Who, what's the major of all those people for major A? Tell me to just raise your hand and I'll call on you. <laughs> So somebody said social work. What do you think? Social work. What do you think? Or biology? Other guesses? Language? Other guess? Social work. Social work. Got a lot of social work. Psychology. Bingo. That man gets a prize. We should have brought you candy. Yeah. <laughs> the group decision. Okay. Wonderful. You did a wonderful job as a group. So. You're going to see that we're going to go through this, and, and it's not just that easy to figure it out, right? So let's go to the second one, Major B. Um, what major did you guess for Major B, based on the list on the back? Kojo. Anybody, are the other guesses? We have communications. Marketing. Any other major guesses? General business. All right, let's see. You get the prize. Communications and journalism. Some of those words kind of give it away. Editorial assistant, TV news reporter, things like that. All right, Major C, what's your guess for Major C? Oh my gosh, raise your hand, please. <laughs> Nobody knows? That was a tougher one. Here, what do you think? Biology, any other guesses other than that? Chemistry was another guess. Different? Biology and chemistry are the, the biggest uh, ones. Let's see. Those of you who said biology are correct. There you go. Boy, you're really getting into this. <laughs> and, and you know, we did throw you off, didn't we? Because it says pharmacy intern, and you're absolutely right. The most common undergraduate degree before pharmacy is chemistry, but just goes to show you, maybe they took a lot of chemistry classes. All right, the last one, Major D. What is your guess for Major D? I haven't done anything on this side of the room. Somebody raise your hand. Yes, sir. Finance. Pardon? Finance. Finance is a, a guess. Other guesses? Any other guesses other than finance? Economics? General business? 
Business marketing. Let's see. Marketing. Last one. Got it. There we go. We have um, 10 different concentrations in our College of Business. That alone can be very confusing. <laughs> so this particular list, though, all of these people had a marketing management concentration, and that's the way it's expressed on the resumes. It's a, a degree, it's a bachelor's degree in business administration with a concentration in, and in this case it was marketing management. So this, this just illustrates, doesn't it? Is there, it, the question is, um, does the name of the major connect with the job title? So we often hear students ask us, well, what should I do first? Do I, should I choose my major first or do I choose the career interest first? Uh, and like I said, I think that's translated to really mean, does the name of the major on a resume matter to an employer? I think that's really the question. Does the name of your major on your resume matter to an employer? The answer really is sometimes yes and sometimes no. A lot of people think it's always yes. Um, in truth, from my experience talking to a lot of employers who are hiring our students, it's the experiences that are noted on the resume that have the most influence on an employer. Sometimes, of course, it is the name of the major. Obviously, finance, if, right? If you're going to corporate finance, they want to see finance at the top of the resume. Or if you want to be an engineer, they want to see engineer. But there's a whole lot of jobs and industries where really any, any major suffices. So it, when we say experiences are the most important thing, I'm talking about things like certainly the part-time jobs that students might get either on campus or off campus during their academic career, summer jobs, um, uh, involvement in student clubs and organizations, leadership activities, uh, athletic activities, volunteer work they do, study abroad, internship experiences, of course. All of these experiences line up on a resume and have a huge, huge impact on the employer, especially when the name of the major is broad enough that it may not lead to a specific career track. They're really digging deep into what has your son or daughter been doing outside of the classroom. Key, and of course, that's where we come in. <laughs> so we can now show you more in detail some of the common career services that a lot of people expect a career center to offer. Um, we call it getting your tools ready. Common, resume cover letter. We teach people how to write resumes and cover letters, and you might be saying, oh, but my student's just a first-year student. Why do they need to know that? If they are applying for a work-study on-campus job, we have discovered that many on-campus departments are requiring a resume in order to apply for those work-study positions. Some of them will also require a cover letter, and many of them will require an interview. So if your son or daughter have not done these things before, we have a whole bunch of people in our office that are ready and willing to help them even as early as this summer if they need that. Interviewing skills, of course. Um, we offer group seminars to touch on all of these topics, or they can certainly get that information one-on-one -on -one from us in an individual appointment. And when it says practice, that means that your student can make an appointment for what we call a mock interview. Uh, that's where they will come into our office dressed like they would for a real interview, and we will actually role play with them. We play the part of the employer, and we will fire off real questions at them, real interview questions, and see if they can respond and think on their feet. And then, of course, give them feedback about that. And don't tell them, but we videotape them. We do tell them uh, at some point, but they do get a little scared about that. But boy, there's nothing more powerful, right, than seeing yourself on tape uh, especially hearing yourself speak when you have those horrible speech patterns, for example, using the word like every other word. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, we recognize that. So it's a very powerful thing we can do. And of course, we coach on attire. And we talked about the importance of networking all the way, especially through the internship and, of course, in the job search process. And I briefly mentioned the group that we've created through LinkedIn. It's through the Career, De it's Career Development Center. It's a subgroup called Alumni Sharing Knowledge. Um, I would actually ask if those of you who are alumni, certainly, and are working in the work world, you can join this group as well. 
Uh, we have offer exposure to networking events, both on campus and off campus. And those things are posted, all these experiences. We have an online career events calendar. It says seminars and events on our website. And finally, internships. Obviously, um, you've heard internships are important. We now have many employers that are telling us that actually they would hope to see two internships on that resume by the time they graduate. Uh, we checked the class of 2011. Uh, the survey respondents, more than about 57% of these graduates that responded to our survey said they conducted one or more internships while they were here at school. That's a good percentage. I personally wonder if it's not higher. Uh, and Tommy Careers is the name of our website where employers will post internships and part-time jobs and full-time jobs. So that's, that's what we named the site, and you'll see that through our site. Then it says fairs underneath that. Uh, we offer exposure to students to both the Minnesota Private College Job and Internship Fair, but a lot of other specific fairs go on. Some on campus, those of you who have students that might go into engineering, the engineering, uh, School of Engineering has its own fair where students can talk to companies about internships and jobs. We also um, connect students with the statewide fairs like the government and nonprofit. Uh, careers fair and other fairs as well. And the last note here says on campus interviewing. It's the program that I manage. Uh, we find that large corporations, it's a very efficient use of their time to come to campus and knock off a lot of screening interviews all at once in one day. And it's becoming increasingly common for some summer internships to be interviewed for here on campus. Again, large corporations, and a lot of them are now happening in the fall semester, amazingly enough. Um, there are certain careers that are more common than that. Um, so what we're trying to tell you is we have a lot of services and supports for your student at all of these, these sessions. And we want to show you actually an example. Um, this is a, a representation, the next slide or video, of a student who is waiting for an on-campus interview. Okay, my resume looks good. Glad I wore my suit. I remember the first time I came up here, <laughs> my resume was bad. Boy, am I glad I did that mock interview last week. I didn't realize how often I say, um, when I'm nervous. I've had a lot of practice now, though. Got the car responses for behavioral questions down pat. That seminar was really helpful. Whew, very first interview. I'm pretty nervous, but well prepared. We can do this. The job fair in the spring will be a breeze after this. I really need to work on my LinkedIn profile, though. I think they have pop-ins next week for review. That'll be good. One minute left. Good thing I was early. Here we go. I'm ready. It's a great list of the uh, services and assists that we offer. And obviously, this is an example of somebody who actually availed themselves of a lot of those things, and they feel very prepared. So that's, that's our goal, is to help your student feel very prepared for this process. So that slide says, what can you do? We've been, I've been just talking on and on about all the resources and programs and services that our Career Development Center offers your student. Um, but you actually are probably the key people in their lives at this moment in time. And so as they're wrestling with these decisions about what to major in and about career exploration, we just thought we'd open this up for sort of a, a quick large group discussion. And if you have um, some thoughts about what, what you can do for your student along these lines or maybe things you've been doing, we'd love to hear some of your thoughts about this and your role as a parent. So again, if you have any thoughts, just raise your hand and uh, I can repeat them. Yes, great, thank you.
Isn't that marvelous? If, you, if those of you who didn't hear her, she said that she's found a colleague within her office who's working in an area that may be of interest to her, your daughter. And so she has connected her daughter with this colleague, and this colleague has really become a mentor to her, giving her informational interviews and advice and uh, offering to allow her to come and shadow her in her work. That's tremendous. That's absolutely one of the easiest things, maybe easy, um, for parents to do, is to try to help utilize your own personal network, whether it's through your relatives or friends or colleagues, and then help connect them um, with your student if they are interested in learning more about those careers. Thank you. That's a great example. Any other things? Yes? Yes. I, um, I have my the child that is coming here is my fifth college child that is fifth? going. Not here, but all in school. Mm -hmm. And I noticed that they, my other children waited until suddenly they really are getting to graduate and start going to career services. And as I heard you, I can see that they missed And you've had five, so you know. We've been through this. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so I, I, I applaud you that you are, have, at least for me, it's the first time that I thought, oh, they should have been doing it all along. All along, and absolutely. I, and I'm happy to be able to communicate that to my, to my son, that, you know, take advantage of it today. Don't wait until your senior year. I appreciate that. You're desperate. I, you know, I could have paid you, you know, really. Yeah. <laughs> You, you are, you're, this is exactly the message that we're hoping you do. You parents are influential, and if you say, you know, that career center over there might be able to help you with this, this, and this, that's exactly what we're hoping for. And, and I, you know, you use the word finance major, for, and there's an example. So students are, most students do have a part-time job somewhere along the way and during the year, and many of them are working on campus. So, gosh, why wouldn't that sophomore student even come in and say, well, I'm, I have to, I'm going to be looking for some work-study jobs. I think this finance is what I'm interested in. Do you have any recommendations? Well, guess what? There's a couple of offices here on campus that might give a, somebody who's interested in finance some really good work experience. And it's all about that positioning and planning and what are you going to do for your summer job and shadowing, all those things. And just to let you know about mentoring, um, we do, the university has a formal alumni mentoring program. Uh, that is offered through our alumni association and students can sign up. I think usually it's in the junior or senior year, if I'm right, Diane. And they will put down the career areas they have of interest and then the alumni association tries to pair them up with an alum in that profession um, to mentor them throughout the academic year. And then they also have a very short program called Take a Tommy to Lunch which is just a way to set up a lunch informational interview with your student, again, based on they try to match up based on career interests. So there's a lot of those opportunities. I would love to chat all day, but I think I need to, to move along, and then we're going to give you opportunity to ask us some questions. In addition to the referring piece, um, the listening piece is really crucial, I would say. Just listening to them express their fears, their hopes, their dreams, uh, and, and respecting and valuing the decisions that they're making along the way. They are moving into independent adulthood, we hope. Uh, and I think that one of the best things you can do, in addition to certainly at, you know, encouraging them to explore active career experiences, um, but reflect back to them. You know them better than anybody else. Th what you see in your child, what are their gifts and their strengths and their skills and their aptitudes? That's going to be a really key question that certainly I might ask them if they come and see me. Maybe an employer is going to ask them these questions. And you're probably the closest to them. And you may understand them better than anybody. Um, so help them with that vocabulary of what they're good at. 
I think. There's a lot of things that you can do. All right. Move that along. There's a whole list here. We talked about listening and referring. There's a few things on this list that we provide for you as parents. The website referral means that if you go to our Career Development Center homepage, you'll see on our left margin, there's a special section just labeled parents and families. We encourage you to stop there and take a look at those resources that we offer to you as parents. The newsletter refers to the Parent e-newsletter, and Sister Sharon tells me that, that you've already been given some information about how to sign up for that e-newsletter. Uh, we have a career corner, basically a short career article in every one of those newsletters every month, just apprising you of what's going on in the Career Center, what are the big programs and events that are happening. Again, maybe that's an opportunity to pass that along in case your son or daughter isn't visiting our seminars and events page on a regular basis, you'll know what's going on. Uh, social media. Social media is where students are, so we are everywhere young people are. In addition, you are welcome to follow us as well. You can follow our Facebook fan page, you can follow us on LinkedIn and other kinds of things. Join Ask, we talked about that. Again, if you're an alumni professional, you yourself can join that program. And the last one talks about posting jobs on Tommy Careers. So many of our parents are also employers. Uh, if you yourself don't hire an interview directly, you may be working for somebody who you know does hire interns and entry level full-time bachelor's degree positions. So please make sure everybody knows that they can talk to me and post jobs and internships through our website. That's important. So again, I'm gonna take a pause. I love this, you can kind of keep the conversation. We have about five to 10 minutes, and this is the chance for you to think about any questions you have for me about career services, about our activities, about advice, uh, and depending on how much time we have, if there's extra time, I can uh, also give you a quick show and tell of the resources through our webpage. So this is just kind of a list of common areas that we get questions about. So not sure if you have questions about any of those things, but just raise your hand and let me know if you do. Yes, there's a question here. Mm -hmm. What is a high school student's? That's a good question. Um, and, and for I know a lot of students have created a resume for their college application process. So the high school, the incoming first year student, is going to look back at their high school activities. Whether it's sports, whether it's the arts, um, what did they do during the summers? Did they work as a summer camp counselor? Uh, were they working retail? Uh, those kinds of things would be on there. I say, you know, has anybody had a student who's already, like you were talking about, done maybe an informational interview with somebody in their field of interest? Maybe a few of you? So if, yeah, great, that's wonderful. So if you're feeling like your student's resume is a little thin, right, from high school, um, I, you could put a section that said career exploration and then note the kinds of career exploration activities they've been involved with interviewed professionals in the field of, shadowed somebody or other, interned, I, I, there are some high school students that are doing internships now, I hear, it's really amazing. Um, but everybody, certainly when they apply for, especially on-campus jobs and they're a first-year student, we get it. I don't think they have too big an expectation of that. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Other questions? Yes, here. This has been great information, and I think, it, as was mentioned before, it'd be very good for the student to start out right away freshman year. But are you going to be covering all this with the students? Because sometimes the students listen to the parents, sometimes they don't, and they need to hear it on their own and feel like it's theirs, and that's when they start owning it. Right. Your, your question was, um, this is great information for you, but do we cover this directly with the students themselves? That's one of the reasons why we created that I Explore program. It's a great way for first year students to get connected with our office right away. Uh, like I said, at our information table, they filled out a sheet of paper with their email address or their information, uh, or they can email our office directly and ask to get connected with the I Explore program. That means that they now are on our email list. So we can give them information about things that are going on in our office and we invite them regularly to come in and speak to us with these commonly common questions that everybody has. They didn't stop at your table. 
then could you, could you encourage them to look at the, uh, they could email us and ask to, be, to get some career information. Maybe you could help them do that. Um, I know that our academic advising staff uh, is very well connected to us as well. So that's a very common place where all first year students really usually talk to an academic counselor. And if they expressed any questions at all about careers or interest in learning about that, the academic advising advisors and counselors will refer them to our office as well and tell them where we're located. That's another touch point of referral. Diane, am I missing anything about how a first year student would find out about us? Just walk in the door, absolutely. Diane is the director of our office. You can wave there in the back, yep. Um, so with our location on the first floor here off of the quad, I guess I should also mention that in addition to the formalized appointments, we offer what are called pop-ins. That means that your daughter, son or daughter, do not have to have any formal appointment made whatsoever. If they're walking across the quad all of a sudden and go, you know, I'm gonna apply for that work study job and I read that it needs a resume and I don't even know where to start writing a resume, or I, I have one, but I'm not quite sure about it, and I forgot to make that, I didn't make that phone call. We have hours every day where they can just literally pop in our office, and one of the professional career counselors will be on duty to answer whatever question is thrown at us. Now, sometimes <laughs> they might think it's a quick question because we usually only have about 10 to 20 minutes in a pop-in, um, but we can quickly understand if that's a much bigger in-depth question and then we can recommend and help them make a full 50 to 60 minute hour long appointment. So that's another easy way to find us. Other question, yes? Just a quick one, how large is your staff? Six people, okay. full time and, and part time. Mm -hmm. I think I have that right. I keep counting every, every semester. And then we also have a half time um, graduate student who's in training too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great staff. Yes, in the back. What, what field is she connecting with? She's with education. An education major. Right. Teacher, teachers are expected to have some kind of a portfolio and examples of their work. It's an excellent suggestion. Some career fields more than others really connect with and like portfolios. Something I've just learned recently is that engineers, they love to see engineers with a portfolio of examples of their designs and their work. Uh, but absolutely, that's a great way. Online, some students have their own websites now. Uh, LinkedIn, uh, basically there are uh, add-ons that you can add on to allow you to upload examples like Word documents, Excel spreadsheets, uh, SlideShare, PowerPoint slideshows, things like that. And guess what? They'll be creating those PowerPoint slides for their class presentations. And especially when they start getting internship experience, they'll have products of their work, examples of their work. And yes, some fields, especially more than others, just love to see portfolios. Great point, very good point. I'm checking, we're about two minutes to the end. One, you want to take one more question? Yeah, one more question. Okay, I've got a timekeeper here, yes, in the back. The summer hours are probably the same as the regular school year. It's 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, Pop-in hours change every day, but it's usually a chunk of time in the morning and a chunk of time in the afternoon. And we just ask students to call the career center or walk in and ask, so what hours can I just pop in? And then the, the receptionist will tell them that. Um, I don't know if we'll be doing evenings, but 8 to 4.30 are our standard hours. Yeah, that's an easy question. And so I think that 
get concludes things. I am going to be available, I don't know about Diane, but right outside these doors over here in the corner, if you want to ask me an individual questions, I have business cards or just anything you need, uh, I'll be standing out there to answer some questions. But we really appreciate you being here. We appreciate you referring your student here. And remember, we're here every single year that they are. Thank you so much.